Hello and welcome to another trades training video. I'm Joe Carswell and this lesson is all about driver bits. Let's get into it. This lesson focuses on driver bits, but that's not the whole story. There's other parts to know. Make sure that you cover our other lessons on cordless drills, impact drivers, and fasteners to understand this completely. First of all, let me say I love driver bits. When I was a kid working with my stepfather out of a station wagon, we were doing installations and we had to take electric drills and screwdrivers and cut the ends off, put them in the electric drills. This was before any battery operated tools to get the job done. This was very frustrating, but it was the beginnings of this idea of driver bits. So a driver bit with a cordless drill is a really powerful tool. What we can do is now make really productive work of driving and removing fasteners. There's a lot of different styles of driver bits. A slotted driver bit is probably the first style that was ever invented. These are my least favorite style because they're non-self-centering. They tend to slip around in the fastener when you're trying to use them. Not good for a power drill as far as driving these fasteners. They would work fine for hand tightening and loosening them, but I would avoid these with a cordless drill. They come in different blade thicknesses, and we'll call those out by numbers with an S. So that would be S1. You see some examples of S2s here. They can go on up S3, S4. They get thicker as the number increases. Also, these blade widths change as well. You have anything from a 5 16 to a 9 30 seconds to a quarter inch and even smaller and larger. So it runs a range. These are generally stamped on the bit. This, and this rule applies to any of these driver bits we're talking about. So if you are, are trying to match your fastener to your bit, which is a very important process, look for the stamp on here. This one says S2 930 seconds. So I would look to match that to my fastener. So if you've ever had to tighten or loosen a slotted uh, screw, you know the frustration of trying to make this fit in there and make it work. They tend to slip out. They can be dangerous as far as causing injury to yourself. There are a whole series of bits that are much better than these that we call self-centering. Our first self-centering bit is a Phillips bit. This one has sort of a cross shape to it. And these come in different numbers as well. You'll see these with a P. This one says, or I'm sorry, PH. This is a PH2, probably your most common one that you'll see. You'll also see a PH1 and a PH3. So those will cover 90% of the options you see out in the field, the one, two, and three. These Phillips are what you call self-centering, and that means that once they mate to the head of the fastener, they will not tend to slip out like that slotted version we talked about earlier. A lot of our driver bits are named for the people that invented them. Phillips was named for a man named Phillips. It's a really cool story. Look it up on the internet if you get a chance. Also, a lot of our other drill bits have similar stories, and these tend to become industry standards over time because they are improvements. Our next driver bit is a Robertson. This one was named for the inventor, uh, Mr. Robertson, and it is a very simple design. It has a square uh, head on it that fits inside of the fastener. This one is four-sided and it comes in different sizes. These could be called square drive. That is the alternate name for them that you might see. And these have stamps on them, either R1 for Robertson, or they might be stamped SQ. That would be one, two, or three. That's very common sizes. And they go from small to large. Robertson screws are definitely good screws to drive uh, if you're doing multiples. They're a little finicky with the axis. So if you're not good at keeping your drill straight when you're driving these, they can create a problem. And also when these wear, they tend to strip out the fastener. So keep a fresh bit around if you're driving a lot of these. Hi, sorry for the interruption. I had a quick message for you. We offer a lot of other lessons at our learning portal, which is tradeskillsu.com. If you're a teacher and you've found us here, we have a ton of other resources to help you with your students teach them construction in a digital environment. You can find those at teachconstruction.org. Once again, thanks for watching. Let's get back to the video. Our next type would be a posit drive. And this is kind of a combination between our Phillips, which is 
uh, self-centering and our Robertson, which is also self-centering. The problem with our Phillips is they tend to cam out. If you've ever had to drive a long Phillips screw, it's really hard to keep contact with that Phillips bit and the fastener. Our Robertson stays in contact with that fastener head. So if you combine the two, you get a lot of torque. It takes a special specific bit to do that. Many people don't know the difference between a Phillips and a Posa drive. You have to look twice to see it. The screw heads are marked a little differently and of course the shape is different. Study this shape and be able to identify it so you can grab that Posa drive bit. It makes a huge difference when you're driving these screws and you won't strip them out like a typical Phillips will. Our next bit is an Allen or a hex drive. These come in a lot of different sizes and think of them as an internal hex drive. There's also an external version, which is sort of a socket type. These fit inside the head and they're six sided. The trick with hex drive uh, bits are that they come in not only standard sizes or imperial sizes, but they also come in metric. These are very touchy when it comes down to making them fit. So make sure that you have the exact size and the exact either metric or standard size to match to those fasteners or you will surely strip these. If you get the right size though, they work great. An improvement on our hex drive is a Torx or Star drive. These have sort of taken over the market in construction and they have turned into one of my favorites. Of all the teaching that I've done, I find students find this style to be the easiest. Think about this as, as an improvement on your internal hex drive. We've added a lot of area for, for the fastener to connect to the driver bit, and you have what looks like a star at the end of this. All of that makes for a good connection, and if your axis isn't perfect, it still works pretty well. These are finicky though with the sizing, so make sure you understand that the matching bit has to go with the matching fastener. Three of those very common sizes would be a T20, a T25, and a T30. These will get you through most jobs. These bits are really short. I think you might have noticed that. This one's a little longer. You need some length on your driver bits. You can't just install this into a drill and have it work out very well. One of the problems is I cannot see the tip of my uh, driver bit and I can't see the tip of my fastener. So I can't tell when I've driven it flush. I can't really see if, I, if my axis is right. I have no line to sight. So lengthening these driver bits is really key. These are actually made to go into what's called a bit extender. And I have a couple different lengths of bit extenders here. These do nothing more than uh, increase the length of this drill bit. They're actually um, magnetic. They just slide right in, that holds them tight. It's a quarter inch hex connection in here. This end of the bit extender goes into my chuck. It has a hex shape to it. I tighten my chuck. Now I've extended the length of my driver bit, even though those are no more than a three quarters of an inch long. I have this much length on it. I have good reach. This one's a little too long for my taste. I like this shorter version. This is very useful for general purpose stuff, but if you need this longer reach, they, these come in all different sizes. The cool thing about a bit extender is how easy it is to change driver tips. It is as easy as pulling one out and snapping another one in. The magnet will hold it in place. If you're working with a lot of different fasteners, this can be a great feature. Another cool feature about this bit extender is this sleeve. What this sleeve does is help hold the fastener in place while you're trying to drive it. And with this here, it'll steady the screw, keep the screw head connected to the driver bit. And as the, the uh, fastener flushes out, it'll push itself out of the way. That's your main style of driver bits. Keep in mind, when you're on the job, you're gonna run into a lot of different fasteners. You need to have all of these styles and your common sizes available to you to use. And if you have a kit like this, Generally, they come with all of these common styles in them, and there's multiples of each. That kind of brings me to another point here. When you're using these, just by using them on the job, driving multiple fasteners, you're going to wear these bits out. Inspect the bits, and they're not expensive items, so don't continue to use a worn out bit. All that's going to do is cause you frustration, you're grinding out whatever fastener you're trying to put in, and you might be able to get that fastener all the way in, 
but you'll never get it out again. So consider that as well. Like I said, not expensive items. So you go to the store, you can buy packs of these for very little money and always keep them available. I hope that makes sense. This is an introduction in the world of driver types and styles. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.